Hi, Trisha here from Club Scrap, and I've got the Club Stamp um, project for Color Me Happy, uh, which was the January 2017 collection. And the uh, with the 12 sheets included in the Club Stamp kit, I've made this darling little box that will hold A2 sized cards and envelopes. And then when you open it, um, inside I have all the cards I made with this kit, which actually overflows the box. <laughs> um, it does make quite a nice stack of a dozen cards. Um, again, just with the 12 sheets of paper included in the kit, you, you can make the 12 cards and you can make the envelope and card box. I thought it would be easiest to show you how to make the card box itself um, with this little video and then I'll also show you how I used um, alcohol inks to create uh, my fun Yupo paper um, lid decoration out of my box and also for many of the card panels. So let's get started with our two sheets of 8.5 by 11 prints. Now in the instructions that come with the club stamp kit, you have um, a download. And on the third page of the download is the information about um, how and where to cut and score the print. So let's get started. The two prints are cut in similar ways, but a very slight modification to accommodate a different size for the lid so that the lid will nest on top of the base. Um, so that's just why they're each just slightly different. So the first trimming instructions for the first yellow print will be to trim horizontally at nine and three quarters. This piece is used to make the box lid and this small piece is also trimmed horizontally at five and a quarter. This piece is used to make um, an, a border strip on a card and this one is a scrap and that's indicated on the diagram by the X. Now on the second sheet of yellow we're going to trim this horizontally at nine and five eighths. So that's halfway between nine and a half and nine and three quarters. You'll find nine and five eighths. And then rotate it and cut vertically at eight and three eighths. So here's a quarter. One little thing over is eight and three eighths. And then this is a scrap. And then this longer skinny piece is trimmed horizontally at eight and four. And then these two pieces are used and this is going to be one of your little scraps. Okay, so set all that aside and um, we're, we're finished with the trimmer and we'll go um, to our scoreboard. Now the neat part about um, this is that it's each sheet is scored the exact same way. So I'll just show you on one of them. It's 7 eighths inch from the edge and then 1 and 7 eighths. This is where having um, the score pals new uh, base that has a score opportunity every eighth inch is really nice for this option here. So seven eighths, one and seven eighths, and then just rotate seven eighths, one and seven eighths. So maybe on this side is kind of hard to see, but if I flip it over, you can see the little bump of the score. And you repeat that for the other piece. Okay, next we have some prep work we need to do in order to be able to create flaps to turn this into a box. We're finished with our scoreboard. I have a scissors here, and I always uh, work with the, the the item position vertically. And we're going to start, this is the sec second innermost score line, and I'm going to cut a small dart, basically just removing the bump of the score in a tiny little V. So this is what I'm removing. It's just a dart. And then I'm going to repeat that on the other side. I want to basically do a mirror. And if you look at your sheet of instructions that I provided, the diagram to help you do this is also included there. It shows exactly where to cut. Now I'm forming what I would call a little tab here, but cutting at an angle slightly on the in, inside of that 7 8 inch score line. So now I have a tab here and a tab here. Then I'm going from the edge, here's the first and the second score. I'm just going to make a slightly inward cut on the out northernmost side of that score line to remove the corner. And I'll mirror that on the other side. So now I have two tabs and I have this, what will become the short wall of the box. Then rotate the piece completely around so that you're not doing this on the sides, you're only doing it at the top and bottom. Now make that dart once again, just like you did before. Now 
Okay, now that you've got this one done, you can also do the same for, this is actually the lid. This is a larger piece of paper. Repeat that for the lid. So to add a notch for the lid so that you can easily open it and separate it from the base of the box, you need an envelope punch board. Now not including, you know, from the innermost score to the innermost score, the measurement of that area on the lid is six inches. And so I have my first flap folded here and I'll place this in the punch board so that the first, that innermost score line is at three inches, so I'm right in the center. And give that a punch. Now you're punching through two layers of paper. Then flip it around, make sure you have your outside score folded. Align the innermost score line at the three inch mark on your punch board. All right, now when I create the walls for my box lid, they'll have that nice little, that nice little notch. Okay, let's just get to making the box now. I have my handy ATG, but you can use whatever adhesive that you feel is nice and strong um, to hold this in place. And I'm going to place, well before I add adhesive, I'm gonna prep these by just giving them a little, little fold here. Okay, so adhesive will go on the, basically the long walls and the short walls on the outermost scored area. That's really all you need. So what I like to do is take my long walls and tuck them in. So left and right edges, if your piece is vertical. Then turn up these tabs and turn them in. And then your long walls will, will form a 90 degree angle with the base. And then take this bottom edge here and bring it up and around the tabs and just secure it there. Rotate, bring in your little short tabs. So you're turning them in at a, at a 90 degree angle and bring that short wall up and over. And you have a beautiful box lid. The assembly of the base is essentially the same. Adhesive, pre-fold and then put your adhesive on, turn in your long walls, rotate your tabs inward and then the, the short walls go up and over. And then your lid will fit perfectly onto your box base. Once you've made all of your cards and components, you'll have the art elements needed to decorate your lid. So now let's take a look at how we're going to alter the UPO paper. In your kit, you receive two sheets of eight and a half by 11 UPO paper. And you, we also have just plain white paper. And when you touch the paper, you'll really be able to tell uh, what's what. I mean, this is, it's a synthetic. So I mean, it's just really a unique feel to it. Um, it's, you couldn't, if you, if I wanted to, I couldn't tear this. I could probably crinkle it, but I couldn't tear it. Um, all right, so what I've got for today's altering purposes is some alcohol inks in three colors. I'm using the butterscotch and the lettuce. Ooh. And I see I have a little bit of alcohol ink in the lid <laughs> and some stream. Okay, those colors seem to mimic what I've got going on. You can just see I'm just throwing some color onto my UPO. <laughs> this is really technical, my friends. And the same with some butterscotch. You could use caramel and then the stream. Just throw it on. <laughs> I know, isn't that crazy? And now watch it, it just like grows. And now you can have some fun with this too. You can put I got a drip falling down off of this here. You can put color inside the color droplets. And let's try some stream inside the yellow. Oh, it's just so cool. And you can move it around a little bit if you want to. But another way that I spread out the ink is I just took some um, plain old alcohol. I got some ink on myself here. And just use a little brush of any kind, and I'm just, look at that. I'm splattering some just plain alcohol onto the ink that I've placed. And it just, as it comes to life, it's so much fun. Just flick it on. Maybe I'll add a little bit more color to this spot. Just a little. Maybe a little over here. Maybe some more yellow. 
Now, if you intend to stamp in a certain area on a panel, you can certainly keep that in mind as you're working to keep at least a lighter shade of ink in that spot. And then when you're happy with how your um, little altering works, then you can just set this aside to dry. Now, because it is a synthetic, if you use a heat tool and you're not really, really careful, you could uh, definitely warp the paper. So, I mean, if it can be avoided, try not to um, use a heat tool. Just let it dry, dry on its own, and it will in short order. Once all the panels are dry, turn them into the panels according to the paper cutting instructions. So honestly, this would be the first thing you'd want to do when you get started with making your cards, so that this has plenty of time to dry before you put it into the trimmer. Once finished with all of that and your, all of your trimming is done, you can turn the Yupo paper into some gorgeous, stunning cards in combination with the other items that are in your club stamp kit, including all the papers, the rubber stamps, the tags, the ribbon, and the whole works. Again, this is Trisha coming to you from Club Scrap. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fun tutorials just like this one. Have a great one.